Good evening, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. I'm just getting things going here for my next concert, and it should be a fun one. This idea came to me a few weeks ago simply because I made a, a playlist on my computer of some of my, my late grandmother's favorite songs. And I realized that there is a whole lot of music that I associate with her. Her name was Bobby, Bobby Duprang, and she spent most of her life in Texas. So we're going to start out with some Texas music. Hold on. Here we go.
right, well, thank you very much, everybody. Who is that? Let's see. Oh, hi, Joe Carroll. I'm so glad you're listening tonight. I thought you'd get a kick out of this. And uh, I opened with some, some good old Texas songs, of course. Uh, there's a lot of songs that I associate with my grandmother. She was just barely old enough to, you know, remember uh, some of the popular music that I played from the 1930s and into the 40s. Generally saying, uh, I like to joke that if you go much past the 1950s, I go out of business. But uh, she, she could remember a lot of the songs that I played from when they were first popular. And, uh, and uh, even so, she was the youngest in the family. She passed just last year, had just turned 90. And, but of course, I started playing the piano when I was about 10 years old. And so she was, I'm very glad that she was able to hear me play a lot over the years, and I've come up with some songs to play that she liked very much, songs that she remembered or that I associate with her for different reasons. A lot of it is Western Swing. Uh, my my uh, cousin Joe Carroll just mentioned that uh, Bob Wills, they grew up listening to, to him in, in Texas and Oklahoma, and uh, he's truly one of my very favorite band leaders, if not my all-time favorite. So we're definitely going to do lots of Bob Wills tonight, and, uh, and, and some different things that might surprise you. So, so uh, let's, let's move on with the program here. Uh, next up is uh, a song that uh, my grandmother was the first one that ever mentioned it to me. I think my friend Bob Milne is watching the, the program right now, and, and I was listening to one of Bob Milne's albums. And he played this wonderful old blues tune called, called um, Trouble in Mind. And my grandmother said, oh, that's Trouble in Mind. My, my father used to sing that. That would be my great-grandfather who played guitar. Uh, it was probably back when they still lived in Oklahoma. The family moved to Texas when she was about uh, seven years old. And that would have been in the 1930s. My grandmother was born in 1930s. And uh, this is a very famous song that has been recorded by all kinds of people. Uh, it was written by a pianist from New Orleans named Richard M. Jones. And so I played this on my New Orleans-themed broadcast a couple of months ago. And, uh, but over the years, it was recorded by everybody from Louis Armstrong to Bob Wills to uh, country legends like Merle Haggard, for instance. And uh, I think even the rock star Janis Joplin did this. I heard that once. And uh, this, is, this is the original version, uh, complete with the verse, Trouble in Mind.
Thank you very much. That's Trouble in Mind, a very, very famous song, and one that apparently my great-grandfather used to sing. You know, you hear that music is often a family thing. It's passed down, and uh, all of my great-grandparents died long before I was born, but apparently there was some music in that generation, not so much the ones that came after, my grandparents or my parents, but um, great-grandparents, yes. And, uh, well, um, Phil, you asked if that was the same Bob Milne I was talking about. I guarantee you it was. He was the first ragtime pianist, or the first piano player of any kind that I ever, I ever saw in live concert, and it definitely changed my life. Ah, well, now, of course, I mostly, a lot of what I do is ragtime music, uh, and uh, here is one of the pieces that I, I played that my grandmother loved the most. It's just just uh, something, she didn't know it, you know, from her youth, of course, but it is something that I played that she loved, very much her style, and I learned it from Johnny Maddox. It's, it's a 1915 piano solo blues number, and it was written by a man named Will Nash. I think he was the pianist with W.C. Handy's band in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's called the Snaky Blues from 1915. It, and the subtitle on the cover of the sheet music says, An Etude in Ragtime. In the early days, blues and ragtime were very similar. And uh, there's also an unusual bass pattern in, in this piece. Uh, Johnny sort of brought it out in octaves, and I, I like the way he played it very much. Snaky Blues. <laughs>
thank you very much, everybody. The Snaky Blues. I hope you're uh, enjoying that, uh, this, this kind of music. And uh, if you are, please share the live stream. I'm trying to get the numbers up. And if you're so inclined, you can also make virtual tips by PayPal or Venmo. And uh, I have a P.O. box, too, for people who prefer to send old-fashioned checks. Boy, <laughs> I always try and straighten my bow tie, and it's inverted, you know, in the computer as I'm looking at it. Oh, oh, dear. Well, uh, I'm going to keep going here. Unless anybody has requests, go ahead and send them in. Uh, let me check the YouTube stream, too. Oh, hello, Quebec. I saw your comment there on YouTube. <laughs> uh, well, it's always good to play famous songs that everybody knows. And uh, when I first started playing the piano, I would, I would spend a lot of time playing uh, for the senior center where my grandparents used to go play cards. They loved to play cards. And they had this fun old friend, uh, this couple, Ray and Millie. And Ray would ask me to play the beer barrel polka. And I played for him. And then he'd ask me to play the beer barrel polka. And then he'd say, gosh, do you know the beer barrel polka? <laughs> and I'd play it again. And we had so much fun. That was probably when I was 11 or 12 years old. And uh, I now do the beer barrel polka as a medley with another song. Uh, I guess it's a polka as well. And uh, this is how J Johnny Maddox played the two songs together. And I didn't know what the other song was that he put in the middle of it. And I was listening to his recording one day, and my grandmother started quoting the words to the songs in the, in the um, uh, recording. And she said, uh, uh, oh, shoot, now I'm going to forget the words. <laughs> you laughed and called me old Santa Claus. Uh, honey, I'm, uh, I'm telling you true. Yes, I'm through with you because, just because. Oh, I saw some of those requests. I'll get them in just a second. Hey. 
Oh, hey, good night, Bob. Thanks, everybody. Well, I saw a request for Maple Leaf Rag. I guess it really wouldn't hurt to play it. I haven't played it on one of these broadcasts in a while, and I should do some ragtime in this one somewhere. Um, I think that's the one I'm most in the mood to play, so so let's let's do it. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. And hi, Maria. I'm so glad you tuned in tonight. Um, since I'm, I've got quite a few family members watching tonight, I, I thought it would be fun for the theme for tonight's concert to do some of my late grandmother's favorite songs. So, yeah. Oh, are you driving? Well, just watch the road. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's the classic maple leaf rag. That's for you, Sebastian. Happy to do it. I do, many of you may have heard my fancy arrangement of it where I do it in multiple keys, but I figure sometimes I should do it uh, straight, the, more the way it was written, especially if there's people who haven't heard the piece before or so forth. And, um, uh, well, uh, we're going to do another actual uh, ragtime piece. And my grandmother, I, I don't remember exactly when, but I know that she was the first person who ever mentioned this song to me. And... It was originally written in 1917. Here is the original copy of the song, which I only found in, in more recent years. This is one of the treasures of my sheet music collection. It's called the Johnson Rag, and uh, you can see on the original copy here, it's called That Lovin' Johnson Rag. And the reason that my grandmother knew this song is because it was revived during World War II by the big bands. Glenn Miller recorded it. Uh, I think Tommy Dorsey's orchestra recorded it. And uh, I've actually never played it. <laughs> but I'm going to read it from this original copy, and um, including the verse. It's slightly different than the, the big band arrangement that came out in the 40s. Uh, that, you know, they wrote a bridge for it to be more like other pop songs. But um, here's the original Lovin' Johnson rag from 1917.
Johnson Bragg. Thank you very much, everybody. There's also an instrumental copy of this sheet music, which I'd really love to find, a piano solo uh, from when it first came out in 1917. That's on my holy grail list as a collector. Well, let's uh, slow it down a little bit, and I'm going to play a folk song, which was a favorite of my grandmother's. And uh, I've known this for, for years, but um, uh, it, it was uh, it's one of those songs, nobody really knows who wrote it. That's why I call it a folk song, uh, kind of like Frankie and Johnny, for instance. And uh, this one was published and copyrighted by W.C. Handy. And he, uh, his version was called Loveless Love, and he wrote a verse for it that was original, but the chorus is just a folk song. And it's more commonly known as careless love. And a lot of the types of musicians that my grandmother used to listen to uh, would have performed this song. Uh, maybe even uh, her dad. I, I don't know for sure on this one. And I've been playing a, a version of this song that um, was, again, inspired by uh, the piano player I just mentioned, Bob Mellon. It's, it's very uh, unique and goes through several variations on the song, starting out real quietly and then it becomes ragtime, and, and then uh, he takes the melody, and puts it in the left hand, and there's even a, a somewhat Mozartian variation where he plays it, uh, and it sounds just like Mozart, and I just kind of picked it up by ear. So here's uh, Careless Love. Hey there. Yes, uh, Harry, uh, Bobby was my mother's mother, maternal grandmother. Yep. That's careless love. I should have mentioned that earlier. I didn't think about it. 
Well, in the 1930s and 40s in East Texas, where she grew up, you know, uh, early country music was, was the popular thing. And um, I don't know if she listened to the Grand Ole Opry, but she could actually remember the Light Crust Doughboys, which was a band that was kind of a precursor to Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, uh, the, the Western Swing Kings. And um, I thought I'd do a song which is... I guess it's the only Carter family song I know. I love Keep on the Sunny Side, too, but this is, uh, uh, I think this may have been kind of a folk song, too, and it was uh, popularized and first recorded and copyrighted by the legendary Carter family, the 1930s country musicians, and uh, I think it was in the late 30s when this came out, about 1939, and it's called the Wabash Cannonball. Here we go. Wabash Cannonball. Thank you very much, folks. Frank, I'm afraid I've, I've never played the wreck of the old 97. I love that song, and it would fit right in, but I just don't know it by heart. <laughs> oh, I love the train emojis. Isn't that great? Some of this, um, some of this uh, country music is much better if you can sing it, so there is a limit to the amount of country music I'll, I, I can or will do. Uh, my favorite out of that whole field is really Western Swing because it's more like early jazz. And, of course, uh, I need to do some more Bob Wills for you. And uh, actually, uh, this is a story I haven't told yet. My mother's parents, my grandparents, uh, apparently went on their first date to a Bob Wills dance in Abilene, Texas. And that would have been about 1950 or so when he was still very much in his heyday and a big star. And my grandmother had even seen uh, Johnny Lee Wills and his band in person, too. That was Bob Wills' brother. And um, so I'm going to do a medley of songs, all of which were composed, uh, at least uh, in part, by Bob Wills himself. So we're going to do Sugar Moon and then uh, one of his biggest hits, uh, which was actually based on an old, apparently on an old Civil War song. And it's called Faded Love. And after Faded Love, we'll do a song that uh, Bob Wills recorded called uh, Maiden's Prayer. 
and wind up with one that always reminds me of my grandmother, which is Cherokee Maiden. Supposedly she had a little bit of Indian blood in her, so uh, Cherokee Maiden is one of those songs that reminds me of her. And so uh, here's, here's a little medley of Bob Will's song.
Cherokee Maiden and some other Bob Wills songs. Thank you, folks. Uh, I mentioned my grandmother had a little bit of Indian blood in her. You could kind of see it in the facial look. And uh, here's another song, which was also recorded by Bob Wills, but it was more of a pop song. Um, uh, another famous record of it was made by Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters, and I love both recordings very much. It's a song from 1945 called Along the Navajo Trail. So uh, here's my own little take on it. Along the Navajo Trail. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great, Bernie. Thanks for tuning in again tonight. Hey, um, I've got another very special song planned for you. Uh, oh, Marilyn. Yeah, I'll play that tonight for sure. But I might save it for the grand finale. <laughs> Next up, I want to do a song that um, my grandmother recognized this the very first time I ever played it for her. In fact, I played it over the phone for her just shortly before she died, and she recognized it again, even though she had developed some dementia the last few months. And um, at first, I thought it was kind of a, a folk song, one of those songs nobody really knows who wrote it. But um, the, uh, my favorite recording, I think the, by far the best recording of this, was made by Bob Wills. But um, it turns out, I did a little research on the song just Oh, in the last week or two, and it uh, the composer is is well known. His name is Bo Chapman. 
He was uh, like a black blues musician in the late 20s. And he made, wrote the song and made the first recording of it in the late 20s. But it became a western swing and country music standard because of Bob Will's record, which was made a bit later in the late 30s or early 40s. And the song is called Corrine Corina. And it uh, turns out there was piano and sheet music for, for the song published in the early 1930s. I'd sure love to find an original copy of it. Uh, Corrine Corina, Where You Been So Long. And my uh, version of it is actually more based on uh, a recording of Naki Parker, who's one of my very favorite pianists. And uh, he, he, his career stretched back to the original period of, of vintage popular music in the 1930s. He was the pianist with the Light Crust Doughboys. So anyhow, here's Corrine Corrine. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Corrine Corina, my own little take on it. Wish I could sing it for you, but you wouldn't want me to even try. And thank you so much, Dwayne, especially, for continuing to send in tips. Uh, Dave, I noticed your comment. Sure appreciate it. Uh, I have both PayPal and Venmo, and um, you can even send old-fashioned checks if you want. I'm planning to try and invest in a special camera. I heard about this last year called a Mevo camera that is made especially for social media live streaming. And I saw a friend of mine using one up in Denver recently and I decided it really looks wonderful. I can use it for Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, anything apparently, all at one time. And it, it, the sound and video is very good. So if you can send in some extra tip, tips, I'd appreciate it. I'm planning to invest in, in that to continue doing some live concerts. So um, I'm planning to do that. And uh, th oh, thank you, Don. Well, uh, here's, here's uh, another little medley. I do a lot of medleys of songs, which uh, are all songs that uh, I learned through my 
I learned about through my grandmother, and uh, here's, here's the original copy of one of them. And I could remember her singing this to me when I was a little kid, like a toddler, humming it, you know, when I was sitting on her lap. And I don't, uh, I didn't know the, the correct name, of course, Oklahoma Hills. I just knew the words, way down yonder in the Indian nation, way out west on the reservation in the Oklahoma Hills where I was born. And then uh, later I started learning, you know, about the history of old popular songs. And I found out that this song was a very... Very big hit for Jack Guthrie, who I think was related to Arlo Guthrie. And um, uh, he re recorded it on Cap Capitol Records. The music was copyrighted in 1945. And so with it, a couple of other hits of the mid-1940s. Uh, we're going to do a song that my grandmother used to sing to me as a little kid called Shoe Fly Pie and Apple Pan Dowdy. And then after that, we're going to wind up with one of her real favorite songs, and I have quite a connection to this song as well. It's called Near You. And the song was written in 1947 by a man named Francis Craig. And Francis Craig was from a town called Gallatin, Tennessee, which is where my dear late friend uh, Johnny Maddox lived. And, of course, he knew Francis Craig, who had been a Nashville band leader in the 1920s. Apparently nobody liked him. He said he wasn't very friendly, and he was full of himself. <laughs> and... Um, Nevertheless, he had this enormous hit in 1947. It is supposed to have been the first record that was ever recorded south of the Mason-Dixon line that ever sold a million copies. And my grandmother told me that she danced on one of her very first dates with a boy to this song. So she would have been about 17 years old in 1947. And the song is called Near You. So uh, here's, here's a medley of some 1940s pop hits. Oklahoma Hills and Apple... Shoe fly pie and apple pan daddy and then uh, near you.
Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, someone's commenting about Oklahoma Hills. Said it was number one on the charts in 1945 for 19 weeks. Yeah, that is really a hit. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, well, looks like everybody's enjoying these uh, songs. Uh, it's a little bit country tonight, but that's all right. And, and I'm glad, especially Bob Wills. Yeah, I love him too, Toby. I got your package. Thanks very much. Yeah, that was really special. I'll have to email you. Um, well, in those days, if you went to the movies, there were two big stars. Some people liked one and some loved the other one. Gene Autry or Roy Rogers. And my grandmother was in the Gene Autry camp. I, I like him a lot, too. I guess I like both of them, but maybe Gene a little bit better. Uh, he started earlier his career in the, uh, well, late 20s, actually. And he started out as a Jimmy Rogers impersonator and then became well-known in films in the mid-30s. And in those days, in East Texas, it was a big deal uh, for my grandmother to go to the movie theater on the weekend. And I think all they could really afford to see were the, the cheaper B pictures, like the Gene Autry movies. And so uh, I've never heard of Near You being associated with Milton Berle. Uh, someone else will have to look that up for me. No, I've never heard about that. Could be. I don't know. So anyhow, I thought I'd do a couple of the most famous Gene Autry songs. Uh, the titles of so a lot of uh, pop songs were used for the titles of his movies. So uh, here's a little medley of several of them. We're going to do Mexicali Rose. Uh, my grandmother knew that song very well. Then we're going to do South of the Border, Down Mexico Way, and wind up with Sioux City Sioux. Okay.
Thank you very much, everybody. Those are a couple of the big Gene Autry hits. And, well, what else would we like to hear? I'm going to have some time for requests tonight, I think. I didn't know that about Milton Berle. I was reading in the comments. Apparently, uh, Near You was uh, his theme song. I, I sure didn't know that. I got a request on YouTube for Frankie and Johnny. Maybe I'll go ahead and play that. <laughs> That's cute. Thank you, Susan. She says, I'm a virtuosi and a music historian with a bow tie and a watch on a chain. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the virtuosi part, but uh, here's Frankie and Johnny. This is a, a famous folk song, which I do in a big ragtime arrangement, along with the St. James Infirmary Blues. This is for Scarp 1100 there on YouTube. Sorry, I don't know your real name. <laughs>
much, everybody. Frankie and Johnny. She always gets him there in the end. What can I say? I got a couple of more requests. Uh, I'm looking at the YouTube stream now, and uh, looks like there's even more viewers on uh, YouTube than Facebook. It's usually the other way around. How about that? And I think that's the second request for Piano Roll Blues that I've had tonight, so I'll try and stick that in here in a minute. Um, just wait for, for another song or two. Uh, tonight, the theme, the theme for the concert, uh, I'm doing some of my grandmother's very favorite songs. And she was from Texas, and, and uh, she left home when she was 17 and moved to Houston uh, and uh, worked uh, several different jobs. At one time, she worked in uh, a diner of some kind, and she told me she used to listen to the jukebox. And so uh, one of the artists that she really loved and would listen to on the jukebox was Hoagie Carmichael. And he's one of my favorites, too. <laughs> Free bird, Andrew Green. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, um, I do a medley of Hoagie Carmichael songs, the famous ones like Georgia on My Mind. I've even released that on CD. But uh, incidentally, you can order CDs from me directly. I've got a whole bunch of different ones. If you're interested, just email me, and you can look them up on my website. Uh, but I thought I'd do a song that my grandmother loved, which I don't play quite as often. This is, this is from 1933. I think this is supposed to be Johnny Mercer's very first song, Hoagie Carmichael and Johnny Mercer. It's called Lazy Bone. Wish I could sing it like Phil Harris. <laughs> Lazy bones, sleeping in the sun. You're never going to get your day's work done. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Andrew, I'm going to save that Texas Foxtrot for when I do a more ragtime-themed broadcast. I've been playing that a lot lately. Uh, I keep coming up with things to play that I don't think I have played on any of my virtual concerts yet. I enjoy challenging myself that way. <laughs> um Speaking of which, here's one of them. We're going to do the Tennessee Waltz. We're getting close to the 1950s now. This came out in 1948, I think. <laughs> so here's the Tennessee Waltz. And with it, 
with it, uh, we're going to do a Ragtime Era song, which I may be one of the only people that plays it, from 1915, called the Tennessee Blues. So he here's the Tennessee Waltz and the Tennessee Blues. <laughs> The Tennessee Waltz. Thank you, everybody. That was Patty Page's first big hit, and I do love Patty Page. Now, uh, let me go back to Facebook here real quick. Huh. Um, I saw a request for the old piano roll blues on Facebook, too. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, I have a sp special arrangement of it. Hey, Zach. Woohoo is right. Um, this song came out in 1950. The Old Piano Roll Blues was an enormous hit, and it was a nostalgic song looking back at the days of the player piano in the early 1900s. Well, <laughs> now the Old Piano Roll Blues is older than the player pianos were when the nostalgic song was first written. <laughs> and I do it with a song from the 1921 Ziegfeld Follies called Strut Miss Lizzie. They just seem to go together pretty well.
you very much. The old piano roll blues. Well, now back to the, the theme for the concert. I have another piece of music sitting here on the piano that I pulled out just before I went live. And one of the performers from the days of classic film and early country music that I really like is someone that my grandmother could remember from her heyday when she was famous in the early 1940s. And she was a sort of a country and hillbilly movie star who worked at Republic Studios, same, same place as Gene Autry. Her name was Judy Canova. And this was her biggest hit as a recording artist. It was a song from World War II called Good Night Soldier. And uh, she had a beautiful voice, I think. It was uh, kind of a lower alto voice. And she could also yodel like you wouldn't believe if you've never seen her movies. I even got to meet her daughter out at the Cinecon Film Festival in Hollywood. Anyhow, uh, I thought I'd play Good Night Soldier for you. Good Night Soldier, big hit of World War II and uh, the most famous song of Judy Canova, one of my favorites. She's kind of silly, but I love her. What are you talking about there, Amy? The choreography? I sure can't dance, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Got a couple of more songs to play for you, and including the grand finale in a few minutes, but I could use another request or two if you all want to come up with some things. Let me check YouTube. Huh. 
ha, got a request for You Are My Sunshine. Yeah, that was originally a little bit of a country song, I suppose. I'd have to think of something else to play with it. It's often harder for me to play simple songs because you have to come up with a fancy arrangement of them. Otherwise, they don't sound very good. <laughs> um... That's a thought. Oh, the choreography. Now I get it. <laughs> well, I, I was bouncing up and down. There, there's a theme that's used in the song, Strut Miss Lizzie. Everyone today knows it as the Snake Charmer song. I don't know why. But the real name of that melody is um, The Streets of Cairo. And it was written by a, a vaudevillian in the 1890s named, named James Thornton for the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. And I have the original edition of that song, believe it or not. Anyhow, uh, there's a little uh, <laughs> trivia for you. Till we meet again. Well, that's a thought. Um, hmm, y'all are naming some kind of simple songs, and, and I need to have an arrangement on them to play them. Um, oh, them golden slippers, kind of the same thing. My grandfather knew that song. Oh, I know what let's do. Let's do When You and I Were Young Maggie. That, that was uh, a song that my grandfather knew, and it's been one of my favorites for many years. This, this is a ballad that dates all the way to the 1860s. And it was revived in uh, the 1920s as a Dixieland jazz song. And they called it the When You and I Were Young Maggie Blues. That's kind of how I play it.
thank you very much. There's When You and I Were Young, Maggie. That's been one of my favorite songs, too, for many years. Well, uh, got a couple of more things planned I'm going to do here real quick. Uh, next up, two songs that were hits for one of the greatest country singers of the 1950s, or, or any era, actually. And her name was Patsy Cline. And I love her for a lot of reasons. I love her singing. And uh, my grandmother loved her, and so did my great aunt, uh, Jean. My great aunt Jeannie uh, loved, loved Patsy Cline. And of course, Johnny Maddox knew Patsy and worked with her and just loved her too. So I have a personal connection through Johnny. And um, so we're going to do two of her biggest hits. I bet I've never played these on one of the live broadcasts from 1960, I believe a song that was composed by Willie Nelson, believe it or not, and it's called Crazy. And then shortly after that, I'll do the song that made Patsy famous when she won the Arthur Godfrey Talent Show in 1957. It's called Walking After Midnight, another real favorite of mine. So here's the two Patsy Klein songs. <laughs> Thank you. 
There we go. Hey, Nathan, I'm so glad you're watching tonight. I love Patsy, too, very, very much. What a shame she didn't live longer. Johnny just loved her and said that he felt bad he didn't keep in touch with her after they did a show together. Well, I thought since the, the um, theme of the night was my grandmother's favorite songs, mostly Western swing and country, I'd, I'd end with a kind of flashy a piece of music which is very much country and uh, I learned this from Marty Mincer. I think we're among the only people that play it as a piano solo and so here uh, from the late 1930s is a very very famous fiddle piece called the Orange Blossom Special. Marilyn and Bill hope you're listening. Orange Blossom Special. Well, thank you so much, everybody. It's been a fun night. I hope you've enjoyed these songs. Maybe some of them you hadn't heard before. A lot of them I bet you had. And uh, thank you so much for those of you that can send in the virtual tips. I still appreciate it every week very much. And uh, I'm going to play another concert again next Sunday night, same time, same place. I'm not quite sure what the theme will be uh, yet, but I'll let you all know on Facebook. And so good night for now. Thanks, everybody.